Welcome to episode two of how to open up your own child care center. We came up here on the National Monument in Mesa County. Over my shoulder is Fruta. That's our hometown. And just almost two years ago, this is where it started. So we decided to come up here and film this for you today because we're going to dive in to some of the early components of getting your child care center ready and off the ground. So follow along. Here's a couple shots that didn't make this clip. Who? Um, no. Cut. Oh, wait, kids first, right? Forgot the kid part. 20, 32, 100 squeak, squeak, <laughs> approximately 45 square. <laughs> Here's a throwback to the first video we ever made. Here we go. Hey, Sad, remember this? My name's Sad Huddleston. Uh, I'm my dad's video editor. I play for the Grand Valley Spartans and Fruita I'm Cowboys. 12 years old, I'm in seventh grade. <laughs> You were this I, tall. Dad, yeah, I was. It was only a year and, and a half editor. ago. I played football for the Cowboys and the Cross for Grand Valley Spartans. Come follow me. Then this is the channel for you. You go. It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Where is your inspiration coming from? One of the first things I want you to do is come up with a name for your child care center. You have the inspiration and motivation, let's name it so we can continue to find that fire to drive all the efforts that you're about to make. When thinking about a name for your center, make sure it's not a mystery. We'll throw up on the screen some names of child care centers that you would have no idea what they do for business. This is coming right off of DCUrbanMom.com. I can't deal with any daycare that uses the word giggles in their name. And I dislike daycare graphics that include creepy clown imagery. But my personal top choice is the worst name of daycares ever is Jonestown Daycare. Really? Here's one for you. Quickie Becky Daycare. They say, yep, it's for real. Huckleberry Cheesecake is pretty bad. Sparkles with an exclamation point. Come on. I don't feel like misspellings like Nana's kids. That Z doesn't make it cute. Sorry, Nana. I love the name Tiny Findings, but I hate that they abbreviate it as a TF. Whereas I receive emails exclaiming TF Book Sale and TF Book Boards, or uh, Board Needs. I'm sorry, TF Board Needs You. She says, my mind's in the gutter and I know, but it bothers me every single time. Chaotic daycare. Yes, it's for real, they say. Come on, you've got to choose better names. You want to have a name of your center that says what it is you're doing. Kim and I worked really hard to come up with a name for our learning center. And that's what it is, was learning center. We wanted to make sure that was part of our name. Discovery. My wife worked for another center that had Discovery in the name. And so that was attractive, but Discovery for us meant that children, it, it described what children are doing. They're discovering. We want to make sure we, our audience, the, whoever's driving by and seeing our roadside sign or finding us on their phone or what have you, they knew who we were serving, which were children, Discovery kids. And learning, that made sense. Kids are learning through Discovery. And that's what we were about. Discovery Kids Learning Center, for us, put all of those things together. I've seen some names of some centers out there that you kind of wonder what they do for business. You see businesses down the street and you look at their name and go, I wonder what they sell or do. I'm not stopping my vehicle to pull off the side of the road to figure out what it is that they sell or do. One of the very first things you're gonna start doing is working on a business plan. We're gonna have a template for you in the treasure box in a folder labeled Child Care Startup Toolbox. And when in there, well, that template will help you start to think about the different expenses you're gonna have. You're gonna have initial startup one-time expenses, and then you're gonna have monthly expenses. There's also a tool in there to help you decide on revenue, cost per child, age, your different rate breakdowns, and you can modify that tool by a dollar or 50 cents, and it'll compute for you what your overall revenue might be at 100%, 90%, 80%, and so on. These tools that you'll find in there are gonna help you create a business plan, a cash flow sheet, 
a hypothetical profit and loss statement so you can figure out where your break, break even point is. I've got my business plan from six years ago that we began building when we were opening up our second center. Here you can see we've created some must have, some initial expenses that we knew we were gonna have out of pocket. We had childcare software, which was pro care software. We had computer, staff computer. We asked for donations for those. We have preschool equipment, office supplies, plumbing remodel. When you open up a new center, you're gonna to have to realize that the that grandfather is gone. So the license, the licensing capacity and the way that center has been allowed to operate is going to change. That's almost a certainty because as licensing continues to rev up with new rules and regulations, you're gonna to have to comply with those. That might be the square footage. Years ago, a school ager needed only 25 square feet in a classroom. I visited a center where their license capacity was 78. When I recalculated based on the square footage of that center and under the today's regulations, the license capacity was now gonna decrease by 32 children, huge. So be careful making assumptions. This is why one of the things you wanna do is talk to licensing. You wanna to ask to look at um, current uh, previous licensing inspections. You wanna to talk to fire. You wanna to talk to the health department and find out what kinds of inspections have happened. Get your hands on them so you can see what concerns that the fire department had. They might have let it slide from a previous business owner, but now that they have a chance to look at you and put the screws in you a little bit as you're trying to relicense this facility, they're gonna make you do some upgrades. So make sure you have the cost of remodel estimated and you'll probably end up doubling that by the time you're done. We had in here the expense for signage, for a new commercial dishwasher, for a surveillance system. You gotta figure out what is critical for you to have in your center right now and then you may have to pare down if those funds aren't available. The surveillance system might have to wait. Or for us, that was something that was a, it was an absolute, we were not gonna do without. We had in here initial staff. We had $4,000 in here for initial staff or contractors. This was staff that was gonna help us get our business up and running. We had our promissory notes, security deposit, first month's rent, insurance, licensing help. Yeah, even ordering business checks was a part of our initial critical costs now. But then we broke out costs that we already had paid for. We had already come up with our promissory note. We had that set aside or paid. Our security deposit, software, first down payment, licensing, business checks, signs. So we pulled out 10,000. So our critical cost came to $36,150. Then we broke out those costs that we already had set aside or in essence paid. Promissory notes, security deposit, software de deposit, licensing, business checks, and signage to a total of $10,404. Balance needed over $25,000 still. Some of those costs broke down to variables. We also broke out our monthly expenses so we could try to get a handle on what those monthly expenses would be. You can see them listed here. Total of $19,261. That included $10,000 in there for payroll. We had to figure out what, we're, what it was gonna cost us right now to get started, as well as our monthly costs to operate. Now we gotta look at cash flow. You've got to determine what your cash flow could be at, at 100%, at 70%. You've gotta figure out what the number of children are gonna be in your program that are gonna cover your bottom line. They're gonna meet all of your fixed and variable costs. Forget about profit right now when it comes to meeting those demands the first, second, third month. You've got to be able to figure out how you're going to survive with zero cash. When Kim and I started Discovery Kids Learning Center in 2005, it took us six months before we could even take a first paycheck. We sold our house, used those profits. I sold my business, we used those profits. We cashed in our retirements. We used those funds as well. We were all in 100%. So you need to have a plan for month one, month three, month six to figure out when you're going to start being cash flow positive. When you're considering a facility, I want you to make sure you measure every room. Get a good tape measure, measure edge to edge, and you're gonna need to understand and learn what licensing will allow you to count for square footage and what is out, okay? So measure that room, create a schematic. Here's an example of one that we've created. And by measuring exactly how many square footage, then you're gonna divide that by the square footage required for the children that are gonna be occupying that room. So square footage will change 
It could be 45 square feet per child and maybe a toddler or infant room. Could be 55 in your state. Uh, for an older child, say three years old and older, 35 square feet is what we use here in Colorado right now. So you need to know what the maximum capacity of children you have in each room. And then you're gonna have to make sure you try to maximize that. And so you, where this might've been a toddler room, maybe it needs to be a three-year-old classroom. You gotta have a plan on how many kids you're gonna have, what age they're gonna be in in each room, and how they're gonna move up between those rooms. You're going to need to make sure you have the new current square footage of your facility, the square footage of each, each classroom, and know how many children you're gonna have in each room because those different ages of, of kids are gonna determine the rates of those children, which is gonna determine your cash flow. Here you see rent expense at 12.15% of total expenses, food costs, utilities, insurance, classroom supplies, and down. You can use this just as an idea to help possibly tweak some of your numbers a little bit when you're trying to figure out what your expense flow is gonna be. Let's talk about location. Location, location, location. Location is key. It's absolutely key. You have a few options. A, you find a location that's closing. Put that on your A list number one. B, you find a location that has been used for childcare in the past and is currently not open. That's gonna be second to renovation and getting it up and running. Option C is gonna be finding a location that's never been used for childcare, preschool setting, and now you're gonna renovate that. Again, the challenges are getting bigger here. Option D is starting from scratch. You're gonna build your dream facility. I'm gonna suggest right now, let's look at option A, B, and C, because option D is out right now if you're just getting started. Let's start in reverse. Option C, you find a facility that you're going to consider remodeling to get, to get licensed for childcare. You need to start immediately with health and licensing. Get them into that building. Your county, our county, Mesa County, with the initiative of Child Care 8000, we are trying to create more child care providers, more child care spots in our county to serve our community. Because the more child care providers we have, the more care for families, more families and people can get to work. More people working means more economic development and growth in our community. And that's what a healthy community needs to thrive. That means your licensing specialist health department, they're gonna wanna come see you. They're gonna wanna help you. Ours will come and help you. So call your local county and ask them to come by and, and uh, schedule a time where you can do a tour. They'll help you look at a facility and talk to you about the regulations that are required and the remodels that are gonna be required to do that. I'm gonna encourage you to find a number that is manageable when it comes to remodel. If you're starting from scratch, if you're brand new, be careful on how much you have that you invest in a remodel or getting a place up to running. If you have $250,000 to spend, please don't. Save that money, put it away. Use the minimum amount you possibly have to to be able to get that facility up and running. Option B is finding a facility that's been used in childcare before. You might save yourself $50,000 in remodel costs by doing this. You're still probably gonna have to bring that facility up to code well, you will have to bring it up to code, but the amount of money and capital needed to do that is gonna be less. Bring licensing and health in again. Let them help you tweak and find what modifications you're gonna to have to make to that facility. Now, here's where you're getting closer. Option A and B is that uh, your community has recognized this location as childcare in the past. So it's not gonna be new to them. So when you're getting into option A and B, your community has noticed and recognized that this is the child care center in the past. They're looking to, and curious to see if someone's gonna turn the lights on. In fact, the month that might take you to do that remodel or two months, when you're working till eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night and those lights are on, they are paying attention. When the work trucks show up and you've got the signage company out in front going up, you know, opening soon, they are getting ready. This is the point where you're gonna start doing pre-registration. You're gonna start taking money before you're even open. This is part of your financing if you're on a low budget, no budget, shoestring, trying to get your facility open. When Kim and I opened up Discovery Kids Learning Center in 2005, we had $100 to put in our business account. Everything else was financed. Here's a video on how we turned that $100 into over $1 million in revenue. 
Location A means you found a facility that's about to close. How are you gonna find this? You might talk to a childcare broker, but you're gonna pay big money to get involved in that center. My suggestion is talk to licensing, talk to your local county, let them know you're wanting to open a center. Tell them if you hear about a childcare center that's struggling, that's looking, that possibly is gonna be getting out of business, would you please contact me? They don't wanna see these centers fold. They don't, they would much rather see someone step in. But get involved, you're already in your local market. You're, you know, make sure that you let your director know that you're interested in starting a childcare center because they're talking to other directors. And if someone decides, you know what, I've been in this business 25, 35 years, I'm tired, I'm ready to move on, that is the best opportunity for you. Option A of getting in the door. Option A means you're gonna play the patient game and that can be tough. But you know what, sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good. And sometimes being patient and waiting for a center to possibly be ready to close their doors could be the best opportunity to get in. I mentioned before in episode one, that option A can be a fantastic tool to opening up your center. This is where you have a business owner that's been around for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and they're tired and they're ready to move on. Most business owners in childcare do not have great exit plans. They have what I consider an execution plan where they execute their business. They're literally wanting out. They wanna sell their, their inventory, their, their preschool equipment, all of their supplies for pennies on the dollar, or that's what they will sell them for. They're often either in a, they may own their facility, so oftentimes they're interested in just leasing it and giving you a lease option. So Kim and I got a lease option on both of our facilities and we were able to negotiate some pretty good rent for the first few years before to put us in a better position to where we were able to purchase that. So here's an option A scenario for you. You find a business that's looking to close. Maybe they've advertised it, maybe they haven't yet. A lot of business owners are really careful about this because the minute they publish the fact that they're closing, families and children gone. They, they're gonna start to scatter because they wanna make sure they have a place and they're not without childcare. So once you do that, talk to the business owner, see what they're interested in. What are they wanting for their business? And I would break out their equipment separately, figure out what that would be. You might have to come up with a down payment. They might finance the whole thing for you. You could have a note payable for the equipment. Say it's $50,000. You may have to come up with $5,000 down. And then look into lease options. So in both scenarios, we did a 10-year lease option. So we had a 10-year lease and we had an option to purchase that in three or five years, depending on the center that we opened up. And so we were able to start off with rent for a few months, for a few years, until our business started to grow, we were able to save some money to come up with a down payment. I'm gonna suggest look into owner finance and owner carry. If the property owner, your landlord, is interested in doing an owner carry, this could be a great way for you to transition from tenant to property owner. Now doing an owner carry, you might have to come up with a small amount down to, tr to make that transition, but you're gonna start gaining equity in that building. And over a few years, your equity can turn into a down payment and do a commercial loan through a local bank. And that is when you're gonna take that lease, that mortgage payment, you're gonna take it down again and you could save a thousand, two thousand dollars a month by doing a commercial loan with, at a great interest rate and uh, set out for the next 20 or 30 years. And the difference between renting and owning in our business can be an exit plan strategy that has so many better and greater variables for you. Let's talk a little bit about fundraising, okay? I mentioned when you are in your facility and you're doing your construction, okay? You, you are moving forward, you've signed a lease. Now is the time to start raising money through pre-registration. So start in allowing families to enroll in your facility. And you're saying, but I'm not open yet. That's scary. What if we don't open? You've got to tuck this money away. So you give them uh, a pre-registration, some initial fundraising. Currently, we do registration plus first five days. You might come up with a number to help you fundraise at the beginning and just round it up to $250, and that's going to go towards registration and tuition. If you pre-register 
20 children at $250 a piece, you've just fundraised $5,000. Now, if something happens and you don't open, that's gotta be 100% refundable. So that's gonna be in your pre-registration contract with them. But now you've got $5,000 in the bank to help with payroll when you first open. Double that. When you start outfitting your classroom at a zero budget or low budget, no budget, hit the garage sales. Get out there in the summertime and start finding items that are gonna be able to fit and, and, and fill your classrooms. Let me jump back to the business plan a little bit. You're gonna to have to start thinking about your location as well. If you're in a pocket in your community where you have high numbers, let's say 80% of your families are on childcare assistance, the rate that you're gonna get paid there might be $30 a day compared to your rate of $40 a day. So you've got to figure that in when it comes to determining maximum cash flow. All right, we're going to wrap up episode two with that. We are just starting to dive in and we're going to keep going back to these previous topics and dig in a little bit deeper. So today we talked about location, we talked about money, we talked about a business plan. Those are hot topics and that'll continue through this series. We're also going to get into next human resources, hiring, where are you going to find your staff? You already have good ideas on this. You've already got two or three staff that want to come with you. That's my guess. And we'll talk about uh, administrative tools, things that you'll need to support your business administratively. We'll get into logistics, all kinds of things, and we'll continue to work together to help you get started. Make sure you are in our treasure box. We have so many tools in there in our child care startup toolbox. You'll find that in the treasure box. We'll put a link to that video right up in here. And in there, we're going to continue to build systems that are going to help you manage your business getting started off the ground. Follow this journey. Make sure you like this video. Hit the bell so you get notified every time we create one of these videos that will help you stay on track in your journey to opening up your center. Subscribe. Follow along. Thanks. Have an amazing day. Welcome back to the beautiful National Monument here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Isn't it gorgeous? Whoa, jeez. <laughs> I felt like I was falling back. <laughs> not that. No. Not that. A second. No. Cut. Remember that? You read that recording? Yeah. It literally took us. <laughs> we... It's okay. <laughs> squeak. Squeak. Yeah, it's like square feet. We call it squeak. No, I don't think It's short. Mean. It's no. short. It's preschool term. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> no one says squeak. Yeah, yeah, now we do. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope <laughs> ah, here we go <laughs> you're welcome Isabel <laughs> shoot alright good this is something you shouldn't do <laughs> that was so good oh right oh my god professional Hi, my name's Chad Huddleston. I play for the Spart Grand Valley Spartans. No, I don't yeah. <laughs> no, do it, do Why? it, do it, Why? because <laughs> we'll be able to do that from before. I didn't do that though. You, that's making my heart go. Blue. <laughs> <laughs>